the main mission of the Bjornsson lab is to try to understand the role of epigenetics in disease through the study of the Mendelian disorders of the epigenetic machinery. Kabuki syndrome is a prototypical uh, Mendelian disorder of the epigenetic machinery. Individuals that have Kabuki syndrome have uh, growth retardation, uh, immune problems, uh, and intellectual disability. The dogma for intellectual disability has kind of been that uh, intellectual disability is something that you can't treat after birth. We think that our work uh, with uh, work from other individuals uh, suggests that uh, this dogma may not be true, that at least for Kabuki syndrome, uh, it may be a treatable cause of intellectual disability. It is very important to find a way to treat Kabuki syndrome because we want to enhance the quality of life of these individuals. KMT2D is a gene that is a transacting regulator of other genes and it modifies histone methylation and is the main cause of Kabuki syndrome. So if you have a mutation in this gene, you have many downstream effects. A co-expression network is a set of links between genes based on the similarity of expression within a cell type or tissue. KMT2D, the gene causing Kabuki syndrome 1, is a member of a specific co-expression network involving the epigenetic machinery. Specifically, we have established a tissue-independent co-expression network between some, but not all, EM genes. There's a strong relationship between being a member of this network and how intolerant the gene is to heterocycles loss of function variation. In the nervous system, neurogenesis is very tightly regulated. But what we have been observing in neural stem cells, a loss of function in KMT2D leads to this precocious differentiation. We want to understand why that happens. Our studies on gene expression in Kabuki syndrome have revealed insights into the molecular basis of the disease. A good example of that is our work on the immune system. In our first study, which was led by a former grad student in the lab, Janae Pularovsky, she found that a gene that is known to contribute to Peyer's patch development is abnormally expressed in the B cells of the immune system in Kabuki syndrome mice. The Bjornsson lab has characterized several mouse models of uh, Kabuki syndrome. And uh, we've been able to show that these models have many of the same phenotypes as we see in uh, individuals that have Kabuki syndrome. But we've also found some novel uh, phenotypes. And one of those novel phenotypes has to do with the Peyer's patches. You can see a normal Peyer's patch up here. Peyer's patches are these immune organizing centers of the gut. And what we found is that in Kabuki syndrome, these patches are smaller. And there are also many fewer of these patches in, in the Kabuki mice compared to the wild type litter mates. And we think that this uh, may explain why individuals with Kabuki syndrome have such severe feeding intolerance uh, early in life. There are some processes in the brain that are quite dynamic. One of those processes is uh, something called adult neurogenesis, the process of making neurons. And we have found that in Kabuki syndrome, this process is disturbed so that they cannot make as many neurons as, uh, as the wild type mice. Any time you discover something in mice, it's very important to be able to validate it in, in patients. And there was a young uh, neurologist at Johns Hopkins that came to me with the idea that if this process is disrupted in individuals with Kabuki syndrome, you would expect visual spatial uh, defects. And in fact, when we set up a study where we IQ matched uh, Kabuki with other causes of intellectual disability, Kabuki shown in red, other causes in green, normal in blue, what we found is the Kabukis had severe visual spatial defects. So this kind of supports the idea that individuals with Kabuki also have a defect of adult neurogenesis. We have seen um, that in Kabuki mice, the bones are shorter than in their wild type litter mates. But surprisingly, when we look at the histology of the bones, uh, we see that the growth plate is actually expanded. Uh, which is counterintuitive. However, we think that this might be related to the fact that uh, KMT2D deficient cells uh, tend to differentiate faster than their wild type counterparts. This is uh, super interesting because we also see this in neuronal cells, but we of course uh, continue to explore the basis of this phenomenon. 
I, I hope that our work, uh, if nothing else, will kind of open up avenues uh, for, for therapy and maybe some therapies that we haven't even thought of at this point. Our studies are proof of principle studies. We've been able to show that we can reverse uh, aspects of the disease in Kabuki syndrome. Uh, with the continued support of the Luma G Foundation, uh, our lab has been able to have a sustained focus on Kabuki syndrome. And this has allowed us to make some uh, fundamental discoveries about the mechanism uh, of disease in Kabuki syndrome, and also come up with some therapeutic strategies for, for Kabuki syndrome and related disorders.